Spyro Reignited Trilogy was one of my first projects as a freelance concept artist, and it was a big win for me because I learned so much from it, and it's kind of kick-started a little bit my career in this field. So I'm super happy to talk about it and walk you through some of the challenges we faced during the production, so let's get to it. So we did a lot of environments for Spyro, and I mean a lot of environments. Spyro Reignited Trilogy encompasses three games, so I believe it's around 100 levels to remake, so that was a lot of work to do. We had six months to develop the pre-production of these games. We could not change the level design at all. Of course, the, the objective was to create a very faithful remake, so every gems, every corners, every platforms had to be exactly the same. But for environment art, of course, we had quite a bit of liberty, especially in the background. We could do whatever we wanted with that, but we still had to stay faithful to the original material, of course. And the artistic liberty versus the original game was one of the biggest topic throughout the whole production, because sometimes if we steered away too much from the original material, we knew that the player would not be happy with that. So. For especially certain beloved level, we try to stay as faithful as possible, especially with the colors, mood, and overall lighting of the place. So I was hired back in 2018 by my art director Josh Nadelberg, with whom I worked on another project uh, called Chartbound that never saw the light of day, but. He was kind enough to call me back and work on this amazing franchise. He also called uh, my friend Didier, with whom I worked throughout the whole production on Spyro, and we teamed up on a lot of levels together. But it was pretty fun to be a little duo uh, throughout the production. So one cool thing that uh, the company provided was the original 3D files from the, the games. And it was absolutely necessary, because like I said, we, we were not allowed to steer away from the original level design. So I guess the main process for, for me was to open the original 3D file in Maya, and sometimes I would add some extra modeling on top of it, or, you know, just use the software to create a cool lighting setup. Right afterwards, I would paint over it in Photoshop in order to, you know, quickly uh, get some proposals out there to my art director so we could uh, find a initial setup, an initial mood for this level. And then we had to paint, like, maybe between five to 10 more paintings, depending on the level. Some were very big and complex, and there were interiors and exteriors, so we would have to define those areas to help the 3D team understand the overall extent of the place. As you can see, in some places, there was a lot of room for artistic liberty. For example, in this uh, area of Mistybug, I wanted to you know, have fun with the space that felt quite empty in the original. So I added a lot of details, plants, different um, structures on the floor and on the walls. So this was very welcomed by the creative team, as long as, like I said, we did not change at all the original level design. One awesome way to add details in the game was sometimes to dig inside the wall. Instead of adding, you know, vegetation and props, we would dig through the wall. So this is a good example with uh, the Cloud Temple level. Um, you see on the original shots, there were like wooden panel and I wanted to add a little bit more storytelling, a little bit more details. So I created those libraries inside the walls and added uh, books and scrolls just in order to get a little bit more diversity on the surfaces and add a little bit more depth also without altering at all the level design and the pathway of the character. Something that we had at our disposal was the um, lore of the original game and the original intention of the developers. And we could spot technical limitations that the developers faced back then. And in the remake, we had the opportunity to make these intentions come to life. So that was very interesting to dig through the past and check out what was um, the original lore intended for some of these levels. Uh, speaking of storytelling, I have a cool example that helped me, you know, like create cool structures throughout the game. And it's in Mistybug, there's a, like in many level, hidden place where the player has to get to. The player has to find a way to get to this area. And I wanted to 
help the player a little bit maybe because it's not so easy to spot so in the original game there are like a dozen of gnorks sitting in front of this pile of gems and i wanted to use this idea to create you know a hidden hideout there where the gnorks had stashed their tribute and were guarding it uh, against enemies i had it this little cabin at first but rightfully so my art director told me that maybe it would cause some problem with the camera so we decided to open it up a little bit more but we had it this meaningful detail in my opinion that was not present in the original game so that's how we differ a little bit from the original in some areas without altering the intention the mood or you know the level design of the original game So let's talk a little bit about the art direction for the game. I think it was very interesting because it made me progress a lot. When I arrived on the project, I was still a junior artist and I had the opportunity to meet a lot of awesome people in this production. And I'm super thankful to being able to speak with these people and get their feedback and understand what they're trying to do. Um, there was a lot of shared knowledge on the Slack and I learned a lot. So basically in the art direction there was this constant discussion about making things more wonky. And what it means is that we wanted to create a lot of curves, tapper, avoid parallel lines in order to make things cartoonish, fluid, add some flow and some rhythm. And this was very important to me because I understood a lot of very important concepts when I worked in Spyro. And thanks to many great artists that helped me understand what it was all about. So some of the guidelines were to add a lot of playfulness, have fun with the forms, have fun with the colors, create some dynamism in the colors, you know. I was actually very surprised to get so much freedom on an IP that's a remake of an old game. Our art director Josh Nadelberg put a lot of trust in his team and that's why I think the visuals of the games look so cool. So a new parameter that was not present in the original game was the addition of dynamic lighting. In the original game it was diffuse only and by the way it's pretty fun to see the old texture map where you could fit a whole level you know on 256 by 256. Today it's absolutely ludicrous but it's it's always fun to see. Anyway yeah so the, the addition of dynamic lighting was actually a very interesting and also quite a challenge because on certain level when we wanted to add for example a simple sunlight uh, we had to be quite careful because we didn't want certain places to look completely dark so we would have to add secondary lighting for example like uh, torches you know or different light source basically and we wanted to conserve this logic throughout the different concept art that we made so there were a lot of talks for example on magma cone has a sunset lighting setup we wanted to make sure that everything was lit properly and that we were not you know like diluting any information due to the lighting so it was quite challenging but also very fun to do i also wanted to create some movement in the environment so i proposed to create some animations on the terrace village level in the original games some of the platforms are like gold um, pillars and i thought this was a pretty cool opportunity to maybe create some animations and i wanted the pillars to actually you know be like faces and have these bright green eyes and when the player arrives in certain specific zones they would animate and create this pathway for Spyro in order to help him get forward but I suppose this differed a little bit too much from the original game plus this would imply additional coding so I guess this was too much work for this level and it was not added in the final product what I'd really like to do is get out of this swamp I also sometimes wanted to, you know, like offer some cool ideas and for example here I animated some lighting VFX to showcase the potential for a very dramatic effect in the metalhead level. Sometimes also as a concept artist your job is to help the 3D team nail out the art direction and painting over 3D work is pretty common to do so. Uh, for example, helping achieve a more wacky structure and more dynamic colors in this example. As an environment concept artist, this is in your line of work, uh, working hand in hand with the production team and creating, you know, art direction documents uh, in conjunction with the creative director, of course. 
So even for props and platforms, I used the original material in order to be as faithful as possible and also see where I could put some extra details and more wonky shapes. So this was a very common type of documents we had to produce throughout the production. And if you want to be a, an environment concept artist, this is definitely a very big component of environment is to create these call-out sheets of props where you can demonstrate a different level of detail. And people just love these documents. So it's an awesome addition to your portfolio. Plus it helps a ton the 3D team. So it's definitely a must have. So I was in charge of uh, reworking the treetop level, which is very famously known for like how difficult it is and especially trying to get all the gems. And um, I was quite aware of that because we were looking very often at uh, lore or, you know, YouTube videos with people talking about how crazy this level was and how hard it was to get it 100%. And um, I wanted to add a little map uh, basically where it shows the correct pathway to get to the hidden dragon and the hidden gems because I wanted to help the players, you know, but uh, in the end, I guess it kind of uh, defeated the purpose of having this place well hidden. And just as in the original game, there were no very good indication on how to get there. I think one of my favorite levels was Aquaria Tower. I just had so much fun working on it. I guess the underwater theme was really cool, you know, because there were so many ways to express myself artistically, because there are large surfaces that are begging for cool details to be added. So uh, yeah, I think this was more one of my favorite places to, to paint. I think the concept that we went back the most on was Autumn Plains. There were a lot of back and forth between concept artists and the 3D team uh, in order to try and make uh, this level as faithful as possible to the original material. We knew how loved this hub was, so we absolutely didn't want to miss the art direction on this one. Anyway, I hope you learned a few things and uh, if you're a Spyro fan, let me know if you finished the game 100%. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.